not only a brand new Mindbender, one devoted to toys this time around, but also super slow-mo. And on that, we're going to show you the incredible launching power of mold spores. Not high-tech, not a toy, but very impressive. We got all that plus a lot more, including a snowboarding bulldog. But first, a machine we found in California, not far from Sacramento, that drives like a car and flies like a plane. Sounds like a high-tech toy you might just want to put on your wish list. It's a car, but it's also a plane. It's the world's only rotable aircraft, and it can convert from a car to an airplane. The man now in charge of keeping the aero car flying is airplane mechanic Eric Sweeney. It's been in his family for more than 20 years. It draws a very large crowd. People really don't know what they're looking at. Car by itself is one thing, but you know, if they see it with set up as an airplane, then they realize there's something very special there. This is a street legal road car. It's licensed, it's insured, just like a regular car. It's unique as an airplane because it's a pusher and a rear mounted engine. And it's unique as a car because it's a rear mounted engine and it drives the front wheels. I want to show you some interesting things on the inside of this airplane. Okay, here we have the standard steering wheel for elevator controls for up, down, left, and right. We also have here a gear shift lever. We have an accelerator, a brake, and a clutch, and we have rudder pedals for flying the airplane. If you're driving as a car, it drives like a regular car. Three-speed transmission with reverse and standard steering. When you're flying it as an airplane, it's standard airplane also. You have your feet on the rudder pedals for turning and your yoke for both uh, pitch control and roll control. When you're flying the airplane, not only are you moving the ailerons, you're also steering the front wheels at the same time. And that creates some strange feelings of yaw while you're also move, flying it as an airplane. It's your basic airplane cockpit with a twist. We have a rate of climb indicator, altimeter, airspeed, and engine RPM, along with battery amps, fuel, and this is our speedometer for when driving in a car, oil pressure, oil temperature. What makes the aero car a mechanical masterpiece is the way it transforms into a car or a plane. We're going to change this airplane into a car and trailer configuration, and it should take us about 20 to 25 minutes. First, the wings are disengaged, detached, rotated, and folded behind the car. Next, the pins attaching the tail of the plane are removed. Once the wheels emerge from the wings, the wings and tail are ready to be towed. As soon as Eric remembers how to hitch everything together. Yes. Yep, did that. An 800 call bad. We got it figured out. I had to call my father to get a little extra directions on uh, the proper sequence of assembling this for so that the car can trailer its wings. This is the first time I've had a chance to do this. It's been in the family 20 years. I've just never had the chance to be around when this is going on. The 150 horsepower engine runs on regular gas or aviation fuel. Although it can do 60 miles an hour, Eric has never taken it over 40. I've never driven a Model T Ford, but I imagine it's probably very similar in the way it feels. It doesn't have shocks, it just has springs, but it's a very lightweight car with a odd weight distribution because the engine's in the back, yet it drives the front wheels. It turns out the aero car is actually a better aircraft than it is a car. But to fly, it has to be turned back into a plane. It's the exact same sequence, it's just reversed. The aero car can fly up to 100 miles an hour for about 200 miles. For Eric, the fact the front wheels turn while you steer only makes it more fun to fly. In smooth air, it's a delightful airplane to fly. It's kind of fun, it's interesting, it's very different. In rough air, it can become a little bit of a handful. But even though the aero car performs better as a plane, it isn't really a great aircraft either. 
It's not a good car, it's not a good airplane, but with those compromises, it is the only one that can do both. And its ability to do both is what makes the air car truly unique and potentially useful, at least in theory. You're flying along, you don't like the weather, you land at the closest airport, you convert to a car and you drive it for a while till you like the, the weather better, convert it back to the airplane and continue on your way. Still, it takes a lot of work to keep the antique aero car in the air. But for Eric, it's worth it. Not because he's keeping a piece of aviation and automotive history alive, but because of the way people react to it. It's such a unique aircraft. People are just dumbfounded by what they're seeing in front of their eyes. So cool. It's like a modern day chitty chitty bang bang. Yeah. <laughs> now, the only problem is it's not a very good car and it's not actually a very good plane. Either. Oh, well. Wow. Anyway, anyway, we're about.